So, uh, so the point here is that the Buddha, uh, after showing this twin miracle, uh, the Buddha went to the heaven of Davatingsa to teach their Dhamma. And the Buddha did not just go to Davatingsa because he was bored with the human world and he wanted to visit the heaven world. The Buddha actually went to Davatingsa, which means the heaven of the 33. Dava means three. Tingsa means 30. So Tava Tingsa means 330. Okay, but in English, we don't say 330, we say 33. So, uh, three, uh, so 33. So the heaven called 33, but we say the heaven of 33 to make the English you know, fluent. And uh, in the heaven of 33, uh, there are 33 friends who in the past life were 33 friends as humans and they uh, built uh, bridges and paths. Not sure about the bridges, but paths for sure. And they also built, uh, most importantly, um, they built rest houses. So what's a rest house? Uh, in this particular case, what we mean by rest house, a place where a traveler can go, sleep, eat, get some energy and continue on his or her travel. And that was the point. So they selected places where travelers go and where they do not have, you know, a place where they could take rest and they built a house where they could come and take rest. And uh, as they were working on this, you know, there were some difficulties, somebody got jealous and uh, spread some, uh, untrue rumors about them and that they had to resolve it and then they resolved it and then they got more trust. And uh, so uh, it's a little more complicated story, but uh, I'm, say, I'm mentioning this because you need to understand that even doing good things requires extraordinary patience and perseverance. Okay, patience and perseverance. Only with these two, you can successfully do a very powerful gamma. And this powerful good gamma got them to the heaven, which is called the heaven of the 33. And the Buddha went to the heaven of uh, 33 to teach their dhamma, not because he would like to see these 33 guys or because he would like to visit heaven, but because his mom was there. His mom is born in the world of Tusita, in the heavenly world of Tusita. Tusita means happy, the happy world. Okay, but uh, mom of the Buddha or uh, of uh, the prince Siddhartha Gautama uh, went to the uh, went to the heaven of thirty three because in the heaven of thirty three, not only the gods of uh, of thirty three. Uh, I mean, the point is that the gods of the world to Sita, which is much higher which is two levels higher. So you have Tusita, above that you have Yama, and above that you have Tusita. So this Tusita and Yama gods can easily go to the world of Tavatingsa because it's lower. But the, but the deities of Tavatingsa world cannot go higher. So if the Buddha went to teach his mom in Tusita, he would be able to teach only the gods from the Tusita heaven and anyone else who would come from higher worlds to Tusita heaven, but not anyone who would be lower. But when the Buddha went to teach uh, in the world of Tava Tingsa, um, he was able to, or more gods, the gods of uh, all of the higher heavenly realms, all the way until Tava Tingsa, were able to come and listen to the great teaching of so now many people say that the Buddha actually didn't go to the heaven because I don't know they believe that it just didn't happen it's very common that uh, scholars and people who read the scriptures when they read something or when they uh, when they hear something they select whatever they believe whatever whatever they don't believe Okay, they may have there some arguments, of course, and I believe I know those arguments pretty well, but um, those are arguments, you know. For us in Theravada Buddhism, is 
it's essential that the Buddha went to uh, the heaven, that the Buddha taught Abhidhamma. Why is it so essential? Because Abhidhamma provides us with information that we do not get in the, uh, in the other parts of the scriptures. And this information is very important for us because it helps us to understand how the world works and how meditation works. A lot of information um, in Abhidhamma is essential for, for progress in, in meditation. For example, the, the understanding of what are the worlds, uh, what is matter, what is mind. We need to understand the first noble truth, and that's suffering. Through understanding how worlds work and what are the worlds, what are the possibilities, through understanding of what are causes, what are the effects in the world, and that there is no space for self, through the thoroughness of causes and effects in the world, it is much easier to accept and, of course, understand that there is no self. And the best scripture for explaining of the causes and effects and thus removing any opportunity to believe that there is any self is Abhidhamma, particularly the last book of Abhidhamma known, well, it's not book, uh, we could say the last portion of Abhidhamma known as Patana, the conditional relations. So Abhidhamma is very essential for us in meditation, in understanding the Buddha's teachings. And uh, some people believe that the Buddha didn't go to heaven because the Buddha didn't taught about, uh, teach about it in the discourses. But the Buddha taught it in the discourses. That means the Buddha taught the Abhidhamma, right? And that should be more than enough. Some people say, oh, but Abhidhamma has a totally different style than Suttas. So there I would suggest two things. Number one, he was teaching it to gods. Gods have totally different, different nature of intelligence than us. So of course the Buddha's teachings must be different, must have a different na nature. It's actually the proof that the Abhidhamma was taught to the gods that it's a different style, not that disproof. And then, Okay, so that, that for me is the most important the second thing about it. So uh, the number one thing, um, the number one thing, uh, importance in Abhidhamma that it is different from the suttas or from the Vinaya is that it was taught to the gods and gods have different intelligence, so it should look different way. Some people suggest that, uh, some people suggest uh, that this Abhidhamma was actually taught by Venerable Sariputta. And that's true in a way, because the Buddha, when he returned from the heaven every day, he summarized to Venerable Sariputta what he taught in the heaven. And then Venerable Sariputta made a neither summarized nor at length version, that means a middle length version, which he then taught to his students. And then his students shared Abhidhamma in the first Buddhist council. Some people say, but in the history of the first Buddhist council, we have the mention that certain suttas, you know, where, or certain collections of suttas, it's more accurate, uh, were shared during the first Buddhist council. But we do not have there the mention that Abhidhamma was shared in the first Buddhist council in the you know, original account on the first Buddhist council. So this is one of their greatest arguments. But Abhidhamma is not mentioned in the very first uh, point, in the, in the very first version of uh, the, in the very first account on the first Buddhist council. We do have uh, mention in the uh, account on the first Buddhist council uh, regarding the so-called Kuddha Kanikaya, the short, uh, the short collection. And some people say that Abhidhamma maybe was part of this so-called short collection. Nobody really knows 
what was meant by this short collection. But one thing needs to be very caref uh, carefully understood. So Abhidhamma is actually understood as part of suttas. And Venerable Ananda, before he attended the First Buddhist Council, where he was the one who was sharing the teaching with all the monks, Venerable Ananda had a thought. And we know what was Venerable Ananda's thought because it's in our scriptures. And his thought was, Um, Chatura, yes, Dva Siti Buddhato Ganhing, I see. Dva Siti Buddhato Ganhing, Dve Sahasani, Bikuto. This we have in the commentaries, but we also have it in the Peragata uh, scripture, which is um, accepted by many scholars as quite, quite ancient. And in this, uh, we have this, you, you have there already mentioned that it's in Peragata, but you can also find it in the Nikaya commentary on the Myanmar page, volume one, page five. So here, Venerable Ananda says, I took, I took 82 from the Buddha and 2,000 from the monks. That means 82,000 from the Buddha and 2,000 from the monks. What is this, 84? 84 pieces of the Buddha's teachings, 84 pieces of Tamma. So Venerable Ananda, no, sorry, Venerable Ananda received 82,000 portions of Dhamma teaching from the Buddha himself and 2,000 from the monks. And then he says, Chaturasi the 84,000 are those Dhammas that are within me. That means that he remembers. So what are these 84,000 dhammas? So far, no scholar was able to really count up dhamma to make up 84,000 accurately and say exactly this is, this is that. But traditionally, if we want to believe tradition, you will believe what you want anyway. Traditionally, it's understood that 42,000 of that is abhidhamma, 21,000 of that is Sutta and 21,000 is Vinaya. So Venerable Ananda already knew Abhidhamma. And Venerable Ananda who already knew Abhidhamma, when he was given, uh, when he was sharing the Dhamma in the first Buddhist council, he was therefore able to share not only the Sutta, but also the Abhidhamma. Later commentaries say that actually it was Venerable Sariputta's disciples who shared Abhidhamma in the first Buddhist council. And we do not have that mentioned in the original account of the first Buddhist council. So even if anyone wants to reject that Venerable Sariputta's students were sharing Abhidhamma in the first Buddhist council, it's very easy for me to say that Venerable Ananda himself shared it. And why, um, like, if Abhidhamma was taught to deities, there is no reason to, well, there is, of course, always a reason, but there is no problem if the mention on teaching, on sharing the Abhidhamma teaching to gods, which was meant for gods and not for humans, the Buddha didn't teach to humans, that it's not in the account of the first Buddhist council. It could be there. It's amazing, you know, but there are many things that are not there. Why would there have to be everything? What if there is just that what's important for us, the humans, and there is not that what's not important for us, the humans. 
from the point of view of the author of the commentary. Because, see, if the Buddha wanted humans to know Abhidhamma, why would he teach them the habit? But still, whenever I raise this argument, you know, with the Burmese monks, and I say, you know, but the Buddha taught Abhidhamma to gods, right? Not to us. So why should we learn Abhidhamma if it was not meant to us? The Buddha didn't teach Abhidhamma to any human in it during his lifetime. Not even to, uh, I mean, not to any lay person or even an unenlightened monk. The Buddha did not teach Abhidhamma to anyone who was not an Arahant. He taught it to one Arahant, and that was the wisest Arahant of all Arahants throughout this Sasana era. And that was Venerable Sarikutta. An argument could be still raised that maybe maybe the people who lived during the buddha's time did not need abhidhamma because they already had enough merit to understand the buddha's teachings of sutta so well that they became enlightened simply with the sutta teaching whereas us who did make it during the buddha's time we need more support more knowledge for our practice. And that's where Abhidhamma helps us. So Abhidhamma here fulfills our lacuna, that means the our you know blind spot that we have because of lack of merit. What is the lack of merit? Lack of merit is when there is a Buddha and you do not become an Arahant. That's a lack of merit. Like when you have a Buddha, you're supposed to become an Arahant. You did not make it during the Buddha's time. Well, then you did not have enough merit. You did not have as much merit as the others. Okay. So none of us had that much merit. We had a lack of merit in comparison to the people, to anyone who became an Arahant during the Buddha's time. Okay. So that's what I mean. So we had a lack of merit at that time. We did not become Arahants. And because of that lack of merit, we are born here at the time when the Buddha's teachings is available, but not the Buddha. And to uh, supply the lack, there is Abhidhamma. So that's my argument. But of course, people will believe whatever they want. And those who are attached to their views, they will believe anyway. And you can think the same thing about me too. You can say, but you are attached to your view that the Buddha taught Abhidhamma even though actually he surely didn't. So it's on both sides. That's where it is a debate. But in Myanmar, if you say that the Buddha did not teach Abhidhamma, you may uh, happen to go to prison. So you'd better not say it.